Hi, welcome to another video in the AS A level managerial accounting series. So in the previous few videos, we studied about absorption costing and we also did a few videos on marginal costing. We understood the difference under each of them. We studied the concepts. We studied their applications. In this video, we are going to study how do you calculate the profit made under absorption costing and then the profit made under marginal costing. And finally, we will see how to reconcile the profit. Like if we have the profit of absorption costing system, how can we do adjustments and try to get the profit as per marginal costing? So all of this will be studied in this video. If you've not watched the previous videos and if you're not clear with the costing concepts, you should watch them in order and then come back to this video so that you comprehend easily. So under absorption costing, what we studied it was that the direct cost and all the fixed and the variable production overheads are treated as product cost. Basically, there are two types of cost, product cost and period cost. Product cost means anything that you attach to the product. And period cost means anything you don't attach or relate to the product, but you treat it as cost of a particular period. So under absorption costing, what we do is whatever is the direct cost, direct cost can be either direct material cost, direct labor cost or any other direct expenses that plus all the fixed and variable production overheads. All of these are treated as product cost. Basically, we try to relate these costs to the output produced. But under marginal costing, there's one difference here. The difference is only the variable manufacturing cost. What do you mean by variable manufacturing cost? All the direct cost plus all the variable production overheads are treated as product cost whereas the fixed production overheads are treated as period cost. What's the difference between the these two statements? In the first one, the direct cost plus variable overheads, which is the production variable overheads and the production fixed overheads, all of these were treated as product cost. Whereas in the marginal costing, the final one, the fixed production overheads, they are not treated as product cost, they are treated as period cost. Meaning, you don't try to associate the fixed overheads with the product. You just say that we've paid these fixed overheads for a particular period. Hence, it's irrelevant for decision making. How much output we produce, how much output we sell, what should be our activity level. For all these decisions, we are not going to consider fixed production overheads at all because they are anyways have to be incurred for the period. We'll only be concerned with the direct cost of production, which is the direct cost and the variable production overheads. We'll summarize this information using this table. So under absorption costing and marginal costing, what is included in the inventory valuation that we're going to see. So direct cost will be included in the inventory valuation under both absorption costing and marginal costing. Same for variable production overheads. It will be included in the inventory valuation both under absorption costing and marginal costing while the fixed production overhead will be included in the inventory valuation only under absorption costing and not under marginal costing. That's the meaning actually of these two statements above. We've just summarized it in the table. So out of this, what can I conclude? I can conclude that for any particular year or any particular month, when I try to calculate the value of inventory under absorption costing and under marginal costing, the value of inventory under absorption costing will definitely be higher than the value of inventory under marginal costing. Why? Because under absorption costing, we are adding additional production overheads to the value of inventory. So definitely the value of inventory will always be higher under absorption costing and always lower under marginal costing at any particular date. Like you can't compare inventory values of two different dates on one date the value of inventory under absorption costing will be higher than that of the marginal costing. If you've understood this, now let's go to an example and see how is this applied in an example and how is this even relevant. So we have an example here where the data says the production in the previous year was 1000 units and the sales was 900 units. No details about opening inventory is given for the previous year. So we assume that opening inventory is zero. So I can say that for the previous year, my closing stock or closing inventory becomes 100 units because 1000 were produced, 900 were only sold. So obviously the remaining 100 becomes 
closing inventory. Now that closing inventory becomes opening inventory of the current year. So opening inventory in the current year is 100 units. In the current year we produced additional 1000 units. So in total we could have sold 1100 units. 100 from opening and 1000 from fresh production. But we ended up selling only 1020 units. So how much would be the closing inventory at the end of current year? It will be 1100 minus 1020 80 units. As of now we have analyzed this information and found out the inventory details at the opening and at the closing. Now direct cost, variable overheads and production overheads incurred the details are given and even the revenues earned are given. What we are supposed to do here is first we are supposed to calculate profit as per absorption costing then we are supposed to calculate profit as per marginal costing and finally we will see reconciliation of profit. Again I will repeat the only difference between profit under absorption costing and profit under marginal costing is the valuation of inventory. The way you value inventory under both these costing techniques. Otherwise there will be no other difference in the profits calculated under these costing techniques. So first we will do the profit under absorption costing. We have a format here. Let's put in the values and finally we will get the profit at the end. The revenues for the previous year 75,000. We will fill in all the values for previous year first then we will go to the current year. From the revenues we will deduct the cost of sales. Opening inventory is zero that we have assumed because no details are given for the previous year. Direct cost incurred 35,000. Variable overheads incurred 4,500. I'm getting these values from here. Fixed overheads incurred 20,000. What is the total of the cost incurred during the period? 59,500. Now I need to value closing inventory so that I can deduct that from this 59,500 and get the cost of sales. What will be the value of closing inventory? This is absorption costing. So you have to include all of these costs, all the production cost, whether it is variable or fixed, doesn't matter, in the value of inventory. So if I have incurred $59,500 totally during the year to produce 1000 units, how much would be the cost of 100 units? So 59,500 divided by 1000 into 100, I get $5,950 is the value of closing inventory. When we deduct that from the 59,500 amount, what we get as cost of sales? is 53,550. Revenues of 75,000 minus 53,550, 21,450 is the profit for previous year under absorption costing. We'll do the same thing now for current year. Revenues 78,000. Opening inventory will come from the previous year's closing inventory. So previous year's closing inventory value was 5950. That becomes the opening inventory for this year. Direct cost incurred 38,000, variable overheads 4,800 and fixed overheads 16,000. So here I'm going to take a total of the opening plus the total cost incurred so that later when I get the closing inventory, I'll deduct the closing inventory from the total of the cost available for sale and I'll get the total cost of sales. So if I take a total of all these values including the opening inventory, I get 64,750. Now we need to value our closing inventory. Closing inventory will be valued at total cost meaning direct cost plus variable overheads plus fixed overheads. So this firm has incurred 38,000 plus 4,800 plus 16,000 to produce 1000 units during the period. So in total it incurred 58,800 for 1000 units and the number of units left at the end were 80. So the value of inventory will be 58,800 divided by 1000 into 80. We get 4,704. This will be deducted from 64,750 to get the cost of sales which becomes uh, 60,046 and finally the gross profit 17,950. One mistake that students can make here is while calculating inventory for the current year, they can instead of 58,800, they start taking 64,750. That's not right because 64,750 is including the value of opening inventory. But we are trying to value our closing inventory based on current year's cost. So now let's go on to the 
calculation of profit under marginal costing. Revenues for the previous year again 75,000, opening stock or opening inventory zero, direct cost 35,000, variable overheads 4,500, fixed overheads 20,000, total of these costs 59,500. If you realize nothing has changed till now, the only change between two methods is the way we value inventory. So here the inventory value will be different compared to what we saw in absorption costing. In marginal costing, you value inventory only at the direct cost and variable overheads. Meaning you treat direct cost and the variable production overheads as product cost and value inventory based on that cost and the fixed overheads you treat as period cost. So the total of direct cost and variable overheads here will be 39,500. These costs were incurred for 1000 units, so divide by 1000 and the number of units left at the end were 100. So the value of closing inventory here we get is 3950. And the cost of sales 59500 minus 3950, 55,550. Gross profit 75,000 minus 55,550, 19,450. Current year revenue is 78,000. Previous year's closing inventory becomes current year's opening inventory 3950. Direct cost 35,000. Sorry, it's 38,000. Variable overheads 4,800. Fixed overheads 16,000. The total cost of goods available for sale, opening inventory plus all the cost 62,000. 750 from this we will subtract the closing inventory value how do you calculate the closing inventory the total of direct cost and variable overhead spent in the current year divided by the total out production output multiplied by the number of units at the end of the year so 38,000 plus 4,800 we get 42,800 divided by 1000 units again because 1000 units were produced multiplied by 80 so 3,420 the cost of sales for the current year 59,326 and hence the gross profit 18,674. Now that we've calculated profit under the two methods, we will now try to reconcile the profits. Reconciliation means we'll try to start with the profit as per one of the methods and then add or subtract the differences in the profits and try to arrive at the profit as per other method. So here we have profit as per absorption costing at the beginning. Then we will add the difference in opening inventory, which I'll tell you why am I adding the difference, less difference in closing inventory. And then finally at the end, I will get profit as per marginal costing. You could also do this the other way. You could start with the profit as per marginal costing and then arrive at the profit as per absorption costing. So here, let me tell you the logic why am I adding the difference in opening inventory or why am I subtracting the difference in closing inventory? Let's do closing inventory first. I think that's easy to understand. Once you understand that, opening inventory becomes easy. If you remember from the previous slides I told you, inventory value is always higher under absorption costing and always lower under marginal costing. So for any year, if the closing inventory value is higher, the cost of sales reduces because the closing inventory is deducted from the purchases or the cost to arrive at the cost of sales. So if the closing stock is higher, the cost of sales in that year or for that particular statement cost of sales is lower and hence the gross profit becomes higher. Meaning if you overvalue closing stock, your cost of sales is undervalued and your gross profit is overvalued. So if absorption costing closing stock is higher than marginal costing closing stock, the gross profit of absorption costing will definitely be higher than the gross profit of marginal costing. So if I start with the gross profit or profit as per absorption costing and try to reach or try to calculate the profit as per marginal costing, whatever is the difference in the closing inventory value, that will have to be deducted here. Why? Because of this difference, the profit as per absorption costing is already higher compared to marginal costing. Now the opposite logic applies for opening inventory. If the opening inventory is higher, 
that increases the cost of sales and as a result gross profit reduces so for absorption costing when opening inventory is higher than the opening inventory of the marginal costing statement the gross profit calculated under absorption costing will be lower and gross profit calculated under marginal costing will be higher so if i start with profit as per absorption costing i will have to add the difference in opening inventory and then arrive at the difference as per the dif arrive at the profit as per marginal costing if you start with profit as per marginal costing, you'll be doing the opposite. You'll be adding the difference in closing inventory and subtracting the difference in opening inventory. So let's take up the values from the previous slides that we've done and let's see, can we arrive at the correct profit as per marginal costing? So, so let's start with profit as per absorption costing. Profit as per absorption costing was 21,450 and 17,954. The difference in opening inventory, let's take. The opening inventory of previous year was zero in both cases. So that remains, the difference remains zero. While for the current year, the difference in opening inventory is 5950 minus 3950, which is 2000. So zero and 2000. Now closing inventory was 5950 for absorption costing and 3950 for marginal costing. So the difference 2000 will be same. And for current year closing inventory, absorption costing is 4704 and marginal costing is 3424. The difference is 1280. So here I'll subtract 2000 for previous year because that's the difference in the closing stock of previous year. And here I'll subtract 1280 in the current year column. 21,450 minus 2,000, we get 19,450. Let's see, profit as per marginal costing, did we get the same? If you see, 19,450. And for current year, 17,954 plus 2,000 minus 1,280, 18,674. If we compare this with the profit as per current year, yes, 18,674. So I hope now you understand how do you reconcile the profit. In exam, they could ask you to first prepare or calculate the profit as per the two costing techniques and then also tell you to reconcile. If you liked the video, please click the like button. Please share it with your friends. That will help me reaching many more students. Thank you for being there.